If you're not aware, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is holding an open comment specifically on vaccine scheduling for COVID. This is the website. To comment, go to regulations.gov slash docket slash cdc-2024-0001 document. For some inspiration, this is my comment. Hello, my name is Patrick. I am an engineering scientist. I'm a member of the public and I possess no conflicts of interest. From the list of ACIP vaccinations, the only vaccination schedule of importance is for COVID-19. The current guidelines surrounding COVID vaccination using mRNA or protein-based vaccines for all ages is adequate and must remain in place. However, the one vaccine a year policy for immunization against COVID-19 is woefully inadequate. On June 15, 2023, the FDA's vaccine committee selected the XBB 1.5 variant to target the 2023-2024 formulation. The vaccine manufacturers held up their end by producing and readying the new formulations by the end of July. However, ACIP did not approve this configuration for use until September 12, 2023, and people were not able to get them at the earliest until mid to late September for adults and at even later times for children. By the time the vaccine was made available, the XBB 1.5 variant only consisted of approximately 1% of the proportion of all variants within circulation, making it no longer well matched to the current variants within circulation. Furthermore, the last COVID vaccine available, the BA4 or BA5 bivalent vaccine, was available the year prior. There was no boosting allowed with the bivalent vaccine, meaning that most bivalent vaccinated individuals had long ago lost their protective active immunity against the viruses. The key problems are as follows. One, the government is too slow in approving and then allowing vaccines to be administered. This allows for COVID to continue mutating, resulting in a poorly matched vaccine to the present circulating variants. The manufacturers can keep up, but the government is not. The government needs to expedite their approval processes to keep up with the virus. Two, one vaccine a year is inadequate. Active immunity is depleted within three to six months following vaccination in immune-competent individuals. This time frame is reduced in immunocompromised individuals. To perpetuate a high level of ongoing active immunity against COVID, we should be targeting the lower end of this range. Vaccines should be made available for immune-competent individuals every three months from a prior vaccination and more frequently, as needed, for immunocompromised individuals. Three, prior formulations such as the bivalent vaccine were discontinued. Full immunization for immune-competent individuals needs to include the full five vaccine series. Considering individuals fully vaccinated with just one dose of the XBB 1.5 vaccine or two doses of the primary series is wrong. Immunity from primary series only without primary booster is insufficient to protect against current variants and provides no active immunity. Only having received the XBB 1.5 vaccine will not provide a person with a broadened immune protection. For instance, those vaccinated with the bivalent vaccine have shown to have some immunity against BA2.86, while those who had a breakthrough XBB 1.5 infection or those with only the primary series vaccine with primary booster yielded in essence no immune responsiveness to BA2.86 infection. Therefore, a historical immune response is needed to combat the many different COVID variants in circulation today. My recommendation, therefore, is as follows. One, regularly updated vaccine formulations at two to three times a year targeted to current variants with a minimum required update every six months. Two, all individuals should be able to receive a vaccine every three months to refresh their active immunity to COVID-19. Immunocompromised individuals may be allowed even more frequent vaccination depending on their individual immune responses. Three, vaccine historical updates and reintroduction of vaccine cards should be required. This includes three doses of the primary series vaccine, one dose of the bivalent vaccine, and one dose of the XBB 1.5 vaccine at minimum.